Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. I'm Amber from Unique Upcycles and in today's video I will be transforming a vintage cabinet into a farmhouse style coffee bar. So if you are interested in seeing how I do that from start to finish, go ahead and stick around and make sure to like and subscribe so you can get notifications of future content and let's go ahead and get started. This is the piece we'll be working on today. I was actually gifted this from a friend. She refinished it a few years ago and the poly ended up yellowing on her. So she got upset, crammed it in her attic and asked if I wanted it. And I never turned down free furniture. So here we are today. I started by using my electric sander to sand off that dark stain to get down to the bare wood. I did not realize that the top was a wood veneer and not solid wood, so my dumbass went a little overzealous and sanded all the way through the veneer along the edges and the corner. I'm using the stain Weathered Gray by Verithane. It's a very opaque stain and I like to use this when I'm trying to hide flaws on wood. I'll be applying it with a two inch foam brush and just going in the direction of the grain. I'm only doing one coat and then I'll wipe it off with a paper towel. This is what the top looks like after one coat of that stain. As you can see, it does hide all those flaws where I sanded through that veneer. You can't even tell. Next, we'll move on to adding the top coat once we bring this inside. I'm now gonna go ahead and use a microfiber cloth to wipe back any dust or anything that was left on the top from outside. I'm gonna be applying Minwax Polycrylic and Clear Satin with a two inch foam brush. You wanna go in the same direction as the grain and do a thin coat. I'm gonna do a total of three coats and I will sand in between coats two and three. A helpful tip is to put your foam brush in a Ziploc bag in between coats so you don't have to keep getting new brushes. It'll prevent it from drying out. I've now applied the first two coats and I'm lightly sanding with a 220 sanding sponge before I apply the third and final coat onto the top of this. Once again, you'll want to wipe back any dust that was created with your microfiber cloth and then you'll apply that third and final coat in the exact same manner that you applied the previous two. I'm now going to remove the doors off of the cabinet and then I will thoroughly clean the inside and out and all the shelves of the piece so that it is prepped for paint. You want your paint to adhere to the piece itself and not to any of the dirt and grime that was left behind. I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down to make sure it's dry and then using frog tape I'm going to go ahead and tape off any sections that I do not want to get paint on. I'll be painting the shelves in the folk art color Turkish tile. I did a total of three coats on this using my bare decorative oval natural bristle brush for uh, full coverage. This is the third and final coat. This cabinet originally did have three doors, but uh, my friend could not find the third door. So I'm going to go ahead and fill those extra screw holes and any damage with some wood filler. Once that dries, I'll take a sanding sponge and I will sand it smooth. I'll be painting the rest of the piece in the color Sheepskin by Folk Art. Once again, I'm using another bare decorative oval natural bristle brush for this. I'm going to start by doing the inside of the doors first so that they can dry before I flip them over and do the other side. Using my Zebra Palm Pro brush, I will be applying two coats of General Finishes Flat Out Flat Top Coat to these shelves, waiting two hours in between each application of the top coat. Thank you. 
Now that that top coat is completely dry, I will go ahead and remove all the tape that I put on to prevent getting any paint on the back or sides. I applied a total of four coats of that sheepskin color for full coverage. I'll now be sealing the backs of the drawers with that same general finishes flat out flat top coat. I'll be using my zebra square brush for this. There were some areas of raw wood showing through on this, so to prevent any bleed through since we're using white paint, I'm going to do a coat of shellac over the entire piece. I'm just using a cheap chip brush that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's to apply this. I'll be applying a total of four coats of this white sheepskin color to the rest of the cabinet as well. I do have a smaller brush that came in a set that I'm using on the front right here. I will try to find it and link it in the description along with all the other products that I'll be using. Switching back to my Zebra Palm Pro brush, I will be applying the same General Finishes flat out flat top coat to the outside. I will do a total of two coats of this just like I did on the inside shelves. I had some of this floral peel and stick contact paper left over from a previous project and it matched the colors really well so I'm going to go ahead and apply this to the backs of the inside of the cabinet. Since the original third door was missing, which held all the doors in place, I went ahead and added some magnets. I marked off with some painter's tape where the door ended and went ahead and screwed these in place. I got these off of Amazon. And this is the completed product. For some reason, the paint decided it wanted to crackle. Um, I'm not mad about it. I think it gives it that aged farmhouse look. I know that you can buy additives to do that and it just happened to do it on its own. If you haven't seen my other video, go ahead and click the card above and you can check that out. Once again, thanks for watching and supporting my channel. Remember to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.